Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University. We introduce you to a new major, Public Writing and Rhetoric, offered in our College of Liberal Arts. We preview our College of Education's participation in National Band Books Week, an annual event celebrating the freedom to read and part of our MT Engage activities on campus. And did you know that MTSU can teach you how to fish? We learned this and more being offered through our Middle Tennessee Outdoor Pursuits Program, part of our Campus Recreation Center. I'm Andrew Oppmann, and this is Out of the Blue. Welcome to Out of the Blue, I'm Andrew Ottman. There's a new major in the College of Liberal Arts, Public Writing and Rhetoric. It's an interdisciplinary major that will teach students how to write effectively for a wide range of audiences and purposes. Here to talk with us about the major is Program Director and Associate Professor of English, Eric Detweiler. Professor, welcome to the show and we're glad to have you here. Glad to be here, thank you, Andrew. So talk to me about this new major, Public Writing and Rhetoric. It's an interdisciplinary major within the College of Liberal Arts, correct? Yeah, for sure. So we're very excited as, as far as we can tell from the research we've done. This is the first kind of major like this in the state of Tennessee. Excellent. Um, and, and the thing that, that separates it from the concentrations in the English major that we've already got is that this is really built around a core set of classes that is meant to introduce students to a wide range of different kinds of writing strategies, writing context, genres that they might use both for you know, personal and public purposes as well as in professional contexts. So while we've got a lot of great tracks in the English major and a lot of great faculty who are a little bit more focused on literature mm -hmm. and creative writing, this is gonna allow students the opportunity to move in kind of a different direction uh, with the kinds of writing skills that they might wanna foster for themselves um, and have different kinds of experiences, both kind of while they're in college and potentially in terms of where they go after they graduate. You know, I think it's fair to say that, uh, uh, that many students have majored in English and they've learned what they've applied from that two jobs that are that are in this in this genre mm -hmm. but you've really taken it sort of a step further in that you're you're really focusing on those who have identified certain career sets these are the things i want to do with an english degree and you're sharpening their skills what are the what are what are some of the opportunities for employment with a with a major like this yeah for sure i mean we're trying to strike a little bit of a, a middle ground in mm -hmm. terms of the careers that we're preparing students for for this major. It's not necessarily a major where you're going to graduate and you're gonna be locked into one thing. Right. Um, and that's what you're gonna sort of be prepared to do over the course of your whole career. It's one where there's kind of a set of careers that are very writing intensive, that students as they're just starting out college might not even necessarily be familiar with, mm -hmm. um, but that they'll, if they pursue this major, you know, graduate with a, a strong set of skills um, that are applicable in those fields. So things like technical writing, um, things like content creation and management, things like even sort of front end web development. I mean, a lot of digital context, digital publications, where you need people not only who know kind of like the back end kind of computer and web design stuff, but can craft written content um, sort of for the, the front end of those websites, who can do documentation about the different processes that a company might use and write that out in a clear way, whether mm -hmm. it's for people who are working there, people who are customers, um, you know, that kind of variety of skill sets. Um, and also just more broadly being prepared to think flexibly about like, who's my audience here? How can I write effectively for that audience? Is, is something that in a lot of careers, whether they're explicitly focused on writing or have more of a, su a surface focus on something else, right. still require a lot of, you know, sort of flexible, adaptable, digitally and technologically aware writing skills to, to be successful in. And that pretty much nails, and I understand the, the public writing part of this. In other words, this is writing that uh, will extend to audiences of all types. Explain the rhetoric side of this. What does that focus upon? When I, and this was true for me when I started college way back when I was an English major, I think a lot of students who are interested um, in writing in English will sometimes think of it a little bit as a form of self-expression. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if in high school you've had a lot more focus on novels and short stories and poetry and sort of English and writing in terms of their more 
explicitly kind of and traditionally creative aspects. The thing that we're really trying to emphasize with the rhetoric part here is helping students think like, how am I trying to communicate with a particular kind of audience and how can I use rhetorical strategies, meaning how do I organize and you know, present the points that I'm trying to make, what kind of tone am I writing in, sort of things like that. Those become really important parts of the writing process when you're shifting to thinking about writing, not just as me kind of trying to express something that I want to get across, but really actively thinking about who am I writing this for, who am I trying to sort of appeal and speak to here. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of us in the English department and beyond and communication studies and other parts of campus who have a strong background in this, this notion of rhetoric as a, a framework for thinking about how to compose written discourse effectively across a whole lot of contexts. And we think that's a really important part of what we're preparing students to do and to help them think about writing in that way in addition to some of the other ways that they might be, you know, sort of arriving at college, you know, thinking about it. I've met with some of your colleagues previously to talk about some of your great programs in the department that are really trying to help students gain the skills that will make them marketable to employers and, and open up some opportunities. How important is that for English departments to, to pivot to those kind of opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's really a both and kind of situation. You know, I think there's lots of students, I mean, one of the things we're really excited about with this major is there's lots of students who are still really interested in creative writing mm -hmm. um, and the kinds of writing that you might a little bit more conventionally associate with an English department. Um, there's lots of students who are interested in reading and literature and those kinds of areas. Um, and I think those can really be sort of enriching pathways for students that can still give them a lot of preparation with reading and writing skills that, um, that are useful you know, far beyond their, their time at MTSU. But I think being able to think about how some of the other, you know, digital media um, that are now a part of our everyday lives are sort of on the horizon and, and how they're affecting the ways that we mm -hmm, read and write mm -hmm. can be really important for students and faculty. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily something where, you know, everybody needs to do a, a, a 180 overnight. Um, mm -hmm. But thinking about how we can put some of these different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together in slightly different configurations, um, I think really benefits students and can really make for some lively opportunities um, in the department. I would be remiss if I didn't mention, because you asked me to do this, that this is designed <laughs> to be a viable double major for mm -hmm. students. Yeah. Why is that? Why is that important? Well, I mean, there's a lot of reasons for that. One that kind of overlaps with that is we've got a lot of, um, you know, transfer students coming to MTSU from various community colleges across the state and across the region. And we want this to be a major that they're not boxed out of just because, you know, they spent a few years somewhere else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Um, and also we think it will pair really well with, you know, programs like as I've mentioned, journalism, interactive media, communication studies. Um, this is something where, as much as we just talked about, you know, writing is a super important specialized skill that mm -hmm. it can also partner with a lot of different fields and a lot of different professions. Um, and we want students to be able to sort of see those synergies and see those potential connections between different majors. I could see this combining with so many opportunities in our campus. Professor, congratulations on a great new major at Middle Tennessee State University, and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Andrew. And we'll be right back. True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. Do you want more from your college experience? At Middle Tennessee State University, that's exactly what you get. More majors, more opportunities, more guaranteed scholarships. Up to $20,000 over four years. MTSU, Tennessee's University of Opportunities.
so many men and women that have served, that expected to be able to have their tuition or certain assistance being given to them, and that money evaporated. With the establishment of the general fund is to make sure that all those men and women can get through MTSU and pursue what they thought they could do when they came on back. We're extremely proud that the Predators have identified the need to help make this fund one of the best at our university for our veterans. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. As part of our MT Engage activities on campus, our College of Education is participating in National Band Books Week, an annual event that celebrates the freedom to read. Associate Professor Katie Schrote and Ken Paulson, Director of the Free Speech Center at MTSU, shares with us about how current events have elevated interest in this topic. Katie, welcome to the program. Hello, glad to be here. It's good to have you here. Kim Paulson, great to have you back. Always a pleasure. So right now, the two of you are joining us to talk about a week, National Band Book Week, September 18th through the 24th. It's a project of the College of Education. Why don't you talk, Katie, a little bit about that, that event and the importance of what you're trying to reach with it. Yes, we're really excited because um, actually nationally there's a band book week every year um, that kind of promotes and advertises um, band books and encourages kids, teachers actually to read band books. And it actually falls this year on the week that MT Engage is doing their week long events. So MT Engage is um, actually a student success initiative started a few years back. And um, really the purpose is to get students engaged beyond just the classroom room four walls um, so they put on events all week and since it fell on band books week we thought it'd be really exciting um, to give away lots of band books have um, students reading them discussing them and um, taking some home for their personal libraries well katie during the week there will be an event like you said, on the campus. Where, where and when will that be? Yes, so um, our event, anyone's welcome to come, and it is in the College of Education, and we will be meeting from three o'clock to four o'clock on Wednesday, September 21st. Ken, obviously, as director of the Free Speech Center, you deal with so many issues and connections with the First Amendment. Uh, why is this event significant? Well, it's interesting to hear Katie's suggestion that you read banned books. Uh, because you've got choices that stretch back to the 16th century. You know, the first time we ever had banned books was only after Gutenberg invented movable type. <laughs> There's no need to ban books when people are trying to do it with a feather pen and the, by candlelight. You couldn't create enough books to uh, create concern. So there are all kinds of worthy books over the past century. Huckleberry Finn is one of the best known um, that have been censored for reasons that make no sense in 2022. So as part of our work at the Free Speech Center, we celebrate ideas. Mm -hmm. we, we think America is a special place because it's somewhere that we're not really afraid of ideas. The, the theory behind America is that if we can all speak and if we can all write, the best ideas climb to the top and we become a stronger, more, more vital nation. And what Katie and her colleagues are doing is a great service reminding people that once controversial books may have been banned for the wrong reasons, and they're really worthwhile reading today. You know, Ken, I've seen you on stage with Freedom Sings, one of the great events that you've, you've held to, to talk about the First Amendment. And uh, Freedom Sings, of course, is comprised of songs that have been banned. Yeah. This event, Katie, um, is, is really going to be discussing some of these books that have been um, banned as well, and some of these are currently banned here in the state of Tennessee. Do you, do you have some of them from me? Yes, so I have a few um, that have over the past year kind of made the news um, for uh, being banned. Walk Two Moons um, was a band in uh, Middle Tennessee as well as Mouse and um, Seahorse, the shyest fish in the sea is not totally banned, but parts of this book have been asked to be redacted. They're calling it instructional shifts or instructional modifications where they cannot read certain pages in this book and um, as well as separate is never equal. And you know, many times they're uh, banned because of talking about issues of racism or gender or um, even historical events such as um, the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And um, so one thing that I kind of think of as a teacher is that I trust um, teachers as professionals 
and um, that we train teachers. We're high quality education here at MTSU. We take classes on developmentally appropriate um, practices and um, I just really trust teachers that they would read um, worthwhile, worthy books um, to the kids in their classrooms that would really spark great discussions and really help them um, view the world um, as a bigger place. That I always tell my own kids that reading books is the only way that we can truly step into the shoes of another person and it makes us more empathetic, better critical thinkers. Um, so I just, I just think books are really great for that. So Ken, has the Supreme Court weighed in on this at any time? In fact, the U.S. Supreme Court found in a case called PICO in 1982 that you cannot remove a book from a library, a public library, because you disagree with the ideas. You can't do it for political reasons. There has to be legitimate grounds to remove the book, not just because the ideas are unpopular. Uh, folks can learn more about PICO and the history of book banning and anything involving the First Amendment by going to the Free Speech Center website. Uh, cleverly, URL is www.freespeech.center. Obviously, this takes place after there's been some recent passage of uh, new legislation that's uh, having an impact in classrooms. Can, uh, just real quick in a summary way, what are, what are two of the more significant uh, aspects of well, that? There are two laws, new laws out there in Tennessee. One is an age-appropriate act, essentially, that says that um, teachers and librarians in schools need to maintain a list of what they're using. And that would be not just what's in the curriculum, but more specifically what's in the library, including a classroom library, supplemental reading. And, and so that list that's can, can get published and then members of the public or members of the school community can object saying that this is not age appropriate. Uh, the other legislation is intended to address the uh, widespread um, outrage in some quarters about uh, critical race theory, which is a relatively obscure teaching at select colleges that basically says that so much of our culture even today has been shaped by racism. Um, it's a legitimate topic for discussion. Legislators have objected to any hint of that being taught in high schools or grade schools. Katie, you, you, you mentioned that uh, there are some things that, uh, that you'll be talking about how folks can help their libraries navigate some of this. What, what's a good example? Yes, so um, I ha on social media, I'm friends with a lot of local teachers and uh, many of them are asking for help to actually document their um, libraries. So they've purchased little scanners and we have volunteers that we're getting into classrooms to help them because actually many teachers have personal libraries of over 500 mm -hmm. um, books that many of them have personally bought with their own money and they in their classroom. yes in their classroom and they want um, to be able to share those books with the kids in their classrooms um, give them access it's actually easier access to have it in in the classroom than even the library and um, so we don't want those uh, shut down different districts are responding in different ways um, but uh, some of our local districts are your classroom library is not open until you have that list um, publicized um, for every Went to see. So help a teacher. We've, um, I've done that. I've emailed teachers asking if I can come um, help them log those books. There's a website, right, that I can find more information about this and all the other events with MT Engage? Yes, MT Engage does have a website and they are advertising all the many events that will be happening uh, the week of September 19th. And our um, our event is on Wednesday, September 21st from three to four in the College of Education. College of Education. On the campus of Middle Tennessee State University. That's right. Katie, Ken, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. And we'll be right back. I am true blue. As a member of this diverse community. I am a valuable contributor. To its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient. And a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. True Blue. 
Do you want more from your college experience? At Middle Tennessee State University, that's exactly what you get. More majors, more opportunities, more guaranteed scholarships. Up to $20,000 over four years. MTSU, Tennessee's University of Opportunities. So many men and women that have served that expected to be able to have their tuition or certain assistance being given to them, and that money evaporated. With the establishment of the general fund is to make sure that all those men and women can get through MTSU and pursue what they thought they could do when they came on back. We're extremely proud that the Predators have identified the need to help make this fund one of the best at our university for our veterans. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. Go to the lobby of our campus rec center and you'll find MTOP, which stands for Middle Tennessee Outdoor Pursuits. This operation has long served students seeking gear, trips, or advice for many outdoors activities at little or no cost. And thanks to a recent state grant, you can actually go to MTOP and learn how to fish. Joining us is Blake Osborne, our Outdoor Pursuits Coordinator. Blake, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, glad to be here. So Middle Tennessee Outdoor Pursuits, I, I, I love your place. We're going to talk a little bit about it, uh, but I want to say congratulations on the $70,000 grant you received. Why don't you tell our viewers about it? Yes, thank you so much. So we received a grant last fall uh, from the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency mm -hmm. and uh, to basically to jumpstart a fishing program with MDOP. So they were able to um, finance us to get a lot of new equipment and fishing gear and things like that for the rental center. That's fantastic. So when you say fishing gear, what, what does that include? I bought around 120 fishing rods, um, tackle, I bought fishing kayaks, stand-up paddle boards that we could fish from, new camping equipment, uh, sleeping bags, tents, all that sort of things that we can now take people not only just on simple fishing trips, but we can start fishing from our camping trips or backpacking trips. Uh, we can fish from the kayaks, from the stand-up paddle boards. That's fantastic. And uh, obviously all of this is available to students at, uh, uh, at a pretty affordable price. Yes. And uh, where do I find you to, to find out what you've got offered and all, all that you have available? Sure. So you could come by the rec center in person. Uh, that's the easiest way to come by. We're open 1 to 6 every weekday except Wednesdays. Uh, you can also find all of our pricing and options online. Uh, at the MTSU Campus Rec website under MTOP. And you do more than just offer equipment, which is fantastic. Right. Uh, but you also do customized trips, sure. right? And will this include fishing trips? Yeah, so we do uh, trips that are open to any student throughout the year. I think I have 24 on the schedule for the semester. Mm -hmm. um, but then we can also do custom trips where a student organization or Greek life or you know, campus ministry could come in and say like, hey, we wanna do a retreat with you. So we, I'll sit down with them and we'll plan a customizable trip for them. Um, and yes, we have, I think, three fishing trips. We've got a couple of bass fishing, catfish, and we're gonna start introducing some fly fishing trips. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Beyond fishing, so many other things that your, your, your office makes available to students. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm a student as well, and I, 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 I check out a bike from you guys. You've, right. got, you've got all sorts of gear. Talk about the things beyond fishing. Sure, so we have um, you know, stuff to go camping, backpacking, uh, stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking. Um, we've got like tailgate tents and cornhole and things like that that you could rent for the football games or take on your family camping trip. You can do climbing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, caving. So the, kind of the other trips that we offer are backpacking, camping, caving, mountain biking, skiing, snowboard usually. We're trying to get another trip out uh, this January to Colorado and uh, yeah, so we can just do pretty much anything, obviously hiking, things like that, so. Yeah, I, I, I really think more students need to be taking advantage of everything you've got to offer there because it's great gear, state-of-the-art stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much of it. 
And it's usually any, anything that you really need to do any of those activities, you can go there and get outfitted. I don't have to invest all this money sure. and buy this gear myself. I, if I just want to go on a weekend camping trip, I just come see you. Yeah, right? you can come see us. Even if you don't rent stuff from us, we'll sit down with you and help you plan where to go, mm -hmm. uh, best time of year to go. We'll help you, you know, again, if you're not going to rent from us, that's fine. We'd love for you to rent from us. It's cheaper than you'll find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of places don't even rent the, the gear that we have. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll sit down with you, help plan a trip for you and your family, for you and your friends, um, for you and your organization, something like that. That's terrific. So how did you get involved in this? I, oh my goodness. Yeah, what, what, <laughs> how did you get connected to uh, this? That's a long story, but I quit my job when I was 25, moved to New Zealand and backpacked for a year around the world. And, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and, through that, and through that trip, I taught a few Europeans how to kayak and backpack. And I thought, how could I do this? So I, I connected with a friend back home. And he was an outdoor coordinator at Wake Forest University. And I, I basically asked him, how do I be you? And he said, go get a master's, get a job with an outdoor program, get all these certifications. So I did that between 27 and 29 years old um, here. I did my master's program here and got my first job at Kent State University. And then I've been back here for four years now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So this is what a great way to combine your passion in, in, into a, a job. Yeah, it's great. It's a dream job if you like the outdoors. If you don't like the outdoors, it is your worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> All right, so if I'm a rookie and I'm, I just want to get started, particularly in, in fishing, I mean, what, what do you suggest? What's, what's the first step I should take? So the first step, uh, again, come talk to us. I'm actually not very good at fishing. I explained that to the TWRA. <laughs> said I'm actually terrible. Uh, but I have student staff that work for me. So I've got, I have about 20 students that work for me and run all these trips. And I've got three fishing guides right now. So okay. um, come in and talk to them. And they'll kind of suggest like where to go. Um, you don't need to buy anything. So we're actually doing free rentals. Um, you can come in and check out free uh, fishing rods and tackle, a little basic tackle box, and we will not charge a thing. Um, we just ask that people show us their valid Tennessee fishing license. Wow. Um, so you just come and show that, then we, we show the TWRA. We, we're actually using the, the equipment for fishing with college students, and so we can just show them, you know, track their numbers. Um, and so we've had about 40 people do it so far since the summer started. That's terrific. Yeah. That's terrific, and obviously, Classes starting at full board in the fall. Folks, you're, you're open now, regular operating hours, That's everything right. going, right? Yep, we're up and going, yeah. So I can find out about you on the, on the web, right? Sure, and you can just Google MTSU Campus Rec MTOP. That's one of the neatest things. Every time I've been there is that uh, uh, everybody there is, is, is talking about the outdoor pursuits, the things that you're doing. Right. It, it's really, you've got an engaged group of student employees, but also you've just got folks that just come in there to saying, these are my people, I wanna hang here. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, we really focus on the safety of everything. Mm -hmm. um, Affordability is a huge one because we know students, you know, I don't have a lot of money to go spend out on gear and, and trips. So we try to make it as affordable as possible and then educational. That's great. Well, Blake, thanks for coming on the show of and course. talking to us about all these wonderful things at, at MTOP. Yes, and when are you gonna come kayaking? I, you know what? I know you took the provost <laughs> That's right. uh, uh, kayaking. I understand he only spilled once. Oh, uh, just once. I wasn't looking, and he. I looked back, and he had, he had fallen over. But That's okay. Right. That's okay. This is good. You know, I, I, I have to at least rise to that challenge, right? Yeah. Okay, right. I'll, I'll take you up on that. All right, sounds good. And this does wrap up another edition of Out of the Blue. A reminder, you can find news about the campus 24 hours a day by going to our website, mtsunews.com. You can also find additional special content on our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Broadcasting from the Center for Educational Media, I'm Andrew Ottman. Stay safe, stay on course, and remain true blue.